Um, yeah, obviously you feel good coming off a game when you when you shoot sixty three percent and, and um, shot the ball well from the from the uh, from the three as well. But uh, um, really pleased with uh, the first thirty minutes of that game. Um, just our our defensive intensity was really solid. Um, I thought we got a little bored late, um, but uh, um, and then I thought uh, our ball movement was uh, was very good. Uh, we exploited some some opportunities to cut. We exploited some opportunities to uh, to post different guys, um, and then I thought that uh, uh, we weren't great, but we were we were really good on the glass. Uh, in terms of, of limiting them to, to one shot. Um, and then, uh, uh, you know, now it's uh, a, a, a different animal uh, in terms of Purdue. Um, I think that, uh, uh, it, you know, it's such a unique situation to have a reigning National Player of the Year return. Um, he's probably uh, uh, more dominant than he was last year, in my opinion. Uh, he's a guy that uh, uh, forces forces um, defenses to react to him, and everybody else gets to uh, gets to play off of him. Uh, uh, those two guards aren't freshmen anymore; they're sophomores. Uh, they've expanded their roles. Uh, they're playing a little um, a little freer. Uh, they've obviously. Uh, you know, seen a lot. They've been challenged uh, with with Maui. Um, you know, with 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 a couple neutral site games with with Arizona and and, um, and Alabama. Uh, so you know, it's a it's a well tested team. Uh, Matt's a terrific coach. It's in their venue. Uh, but all that being said, doesn't mean we're going to show up and, and and not compete, not fight, not uh, not be ready to play. So. Uh, excited about the opportunity, and and uh, we'll uh, uh, you know one versus nine, and in, in, in conference play is is always a good thing when you get two top ten teams compete. This team has seemingly lost, not lost any confidence in the last two ball games. How have they done that? They got a lot of confidence in themselves. They're they're old. They're mature. Um, you know, I think that uh, I think we had a one point four three. OER, which is was a, which was a season high against a team that last year led the Big Ten in defensive uh, uh, in all the defensive numbers. Um, but but again, it's it's uh, it's IQ, it's feel. Uh, you know, I think there's some there's there's a there's a lot of weapons, uh, and I say that in terms of being able to, to shoot it, pass it, post it, drive it. Uh, you know, we we we've seen uh, Justin uh, become. You know, quite an offensive threat. Um, so, uh, you know, we saw Dane in the game before. Uh, so it's it's um, it's developing, but it's it's confidence that those guys have in their abilities and and then each other. Certainly, that, certainly every game's the same, Brad, with, with your opponent. But playing number one obviously brings a little bit more for the fan base and an opportunity to play a number one team. Like, how do you approach that, knowing uh, this is a good opportunity for you guys? Yeah, I, we don't play it up as much as what. Maybe the fans and 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 you all do. Um, it is unique. I think it's it, you don't see it every day, in late, and especially within conferences. Uh, um, but uh, uh, you know what you get every time you play Purdue. Uh, you get a well-coached team that's going to play exceptionally hard. Uh, this is a veteran team, uh, but uh, you know it's it's a, it's a game on Friday night in the middle of conference play, and both of us happen to be. Um, uh, having re really, really good seasons, and uh, both of us are going to have games uh, after this one. So, uh, yeah, it's important, and you want to go play, and you want to play well. And and uh, uh, but uh, you know, it's, we've got 17 or so more after this. Oh, Zach's a one of one. You've seen a lot of dominant bigs in this league, though, including when you had Kofi, Garza. How does Zach stack up to those guys? Or just what makes him so tough here? You know he's he's um, gotten so much better from his arrival. Uh, that's a tribute to them. But uh, you know you just don't see seven four and and uh, uh, three hundred pounds. And uh, it, it's it's 
uh, you know, we had big Kof and Kof was seven foot and 300 and, and, but it, it's amazing just what the extra four inches does. And, uh, uh, you know, Kofi was a dominant player um, in, in, in some different ways. But, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, in my time uh, in, in college basketball, I don't, I've never seen a more dominant center. You, a couple of years ago, they called Kofi the most difficult guy to officiate. Uh, people hang on, people bounce off him. Uh, is that pretty much the same way? Uh, he can be. He can be. I, you know, I think that uh, you have. I think you have to um, um, uh, understand that that um, how big he is. Uh, you know what his 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 ability to, to draw fouls. He's become a very good free throw shooter. I think that uh, um, you know. I wish Kofi would have got some of the calls that that, that he seems to be getting, but. Uh, uh, but yeah, he's big, and 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 because he's seven four, I don't think you know you can uh, uh, just assume that he's he's getting fouled on every play. I think he's got to uh, uh, you know earn the earn the right. But uh, he does get fouled a lot. There's no doubt. I mean, the trickle down from the NBA to college is like dunks and threes, like maybe the most efficient shots. But have you seen maybe an opportunity to exploit having guys that can? what they do in the mid-range, it's kind of maybe a lost art in some places. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, we're, we're, we're a team that likes um, um, the mismatch and the cross-match. And um, I think that uh, everybody who's done it <coughs> to this point, we've been able to find a way to exploit it, whether it was putting centers on, on tie, whether it was cross-matching fours and fives, whether it was uh, playing to a switch. Um, you know, the, the mid-range game is, is, is definitely something that, that we've got some guys pretty good at. Uh, but it's also uh, just the, the shots at the rim we're getting. And, uh, you know, most of that becomes, um, you know, just simply finding a matchup we like and, and not overcomplicating things. So. Uh, you know, we'll continue to explore. We've got you know a wide variety of things that we can do, and and uh, but we do we do feel very strong about about that in certain matchups. Seems like a week or two ago we talked about Ty maybe getting more aggressive, looking to find his opportunities to score. It seems like that's started to happen. Like what's been behind maybe him building that confidence and take advantage of some of those opportunities? Well, he's six six with a six eleven wingspan. I mean, Ty Ty was a high school center. You know, and, and at, at different times, and, and he knows what he's doing down there. He's got great footwork. He's got great pivots. He can use either hand. Uh, you know, he's very crafty. Uh, he's gained a ton of confidence because he's not afraid to get fouled anymore. Uh, he's stepping up, banging free throws, and and he's so fast. You know, he takes up space and 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 creates angles, and and uh, uh, you know, he's an exceptionally good ball handler. And, uh, you know, those are all things that, um, that, that he's able to exploit and we want to exploit. We, we, we love it when he's, uh, when he's wheeling and dealing in the paint. What are you seeing from Coleman Hawkins? Seems like he's playing his best basketball of his career over the last few games. Coleman's been phenomenal. Um, you know, he's kept the game very simple. He's, um, he hasn't, um, uh, I mean, shooting it at, at a, elite rate um, you know I want him to shoot every opportunity he gets um, but uh, uh, you know what he does defensively what he does with the intangibles of the game uh, are so much more than what he brings and, and, and show up in a stat sheet so uh, yeah he's playing great and, and uh, you know he's going to continue to do that and uh, we, we keep uh, we keep growing our package with him, and uh, you know he's 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 doing a great job playing off these other guys right now. You mentioned their guards aren't freshmen anymore. Where do you see them take the biggest leaps as sophomores? Well, I think Matt trusts them. I think I, you know I think that that uh, you know Braden has become you know just a little for lack of a better term I don't know what the right word is he's he's free he's shooting it when he's open. Uh, both of them have had huge nights um, in big games. 
and uh, you know he's 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 kind of the the head of the snake so to speak, but they're playing a little faster. They're playing. They're still running a million sets, and and that's what they do. But uh, uh, you know, last year he might come off a ball screen and be open, and be hesitant and looking to throw it to Zach. This year he's shooting it, and um, you know he's 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 gotten stronger. He's uh, he's more active on the defensive side. He's just he's just really developed into a really really good college guard. Brad, there's obviously a lot of outside noise about Terrence. Is that something you have to talk to the guys about in terms of blocking it out, or is it something that's kind of policing itself within the locker room? Yeah, they they handle themselves. They handle themselves, and and uh, um, you know we're we're worried about Purdue. We're worried about the next game. Um, I think that's the only way that. Um, uh, we can handle things is, is that next game mentality. We've, we've been very, very good about it to, to this point. And, and I love the maturity these guys are, are, are showing and the togetherness and the connectivity that, that, that we've got. So uh, it's, it's, it's all next game up. It's all Purdue today and, and uh, get ready for tomorrow. And then, you know, whoever's in the next one, it'll be all about that. So, um, but uh Love their maturity. We have a common opponent. Have, have you watched a lot of the film of their game against Northwestern? What, what kind of happened with, with that game? I actually got a couple. You know, Marquette was uh, was was early, but uh, yeah, you know, different games, just different. Um, uh, I think our you know our styles are are, are a little bit different, but uh, um, you know, it's it's. Um, you know the, the Marquette game was interesting. It was it was you know kind of a uh, free flowing and, and Northwestern uh, Boo did what Boo does and and uh, but um, yeah so I mean, we watch it but every game's different. We're a little different than than, than, than both of those teams. So we'll uh, uh, there's no doubt you've got to play very very well to beat uh, to beat Purdue and do it on their court. There's there's all kinds of scans now. It's just the uh, the back to play process that he's going through. And again, any, I think any time that you know we want to be very clear about a a, a foot injury, um, you know you don't rush that. You're not trying to be Superman and and say uh, you know I'm good. Uh, you want it to be 100% healthy, so there's no uh, recurrence of, of, of an injury. So uh, he's back to that process, and and you know when the when they all tell us he's good, he'll he'll be in a uniform, and, and we hope that's sooner than later. But uh, uh, it will not be uh, for tomorrow. How is that process different with him, maybe than an older guy, since he hasn't had that experience on the court, if, if at all? Yeah, I think it's it's uh, more the individual. And what the individual can 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 handle, uh, I think the one thing that that Nico's done is uh, he stayed very involved in practices with film. With uh, he's a he's relentless. I think all of our recovery stuff here has helped expedite that process some. So, but he's um, he's a very mature freshman, uh, and he's very basketball savvy. So I think all those things. Will help him in his in his uh, return to play. You talked about how competitive this team is since the summer. Uh, I'm sure you're <laughs> they're excited to go compete against number one. I would hope so. If they're not, we'll be in for a long night. Um, yeah, I, I think the one thing that that uh, we've taken a lot of pride in is being being that very competitive. And and I, I enjoy this team a great deal in practice because they compete. And it doesn't matter if they're at shooting drills. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's one on ones. It doesn't matter. Uh, you know, yesterday after practice, we had a group staying playing one on one and competing, and you know the trash talk and the competing and the, the noise is fun to see because it's it's it, not every team has that, and uh, uh, you've got to go play very hard to uh, to win on the road in this league, and and to do that you've got to compete and have an innate desire to want to win, and uh, uh, this group's uh, uh, got a lot of those qualities. Brett, I know you're not involved in the review process with Terrence, but have you been given an indication the conduct panel has, has ruled or if they have a timeline for that? Yeah, I, the one thing that 
I think Josh made pretty clear was we would we'd let you guys know if there's any updates on any of that and and uh, uh, so I'll I'll uh, stick to basketball and get ready for Purdue. Justin's role has grown and grown. How is he relishing, with, at least for the last two games, being what looks like a sixth man, the sixth man? He's a good player. And I, I, I've said many times, it just takes a little bit of time sometimes to transfer to uh, to find your way and to find your role and to find your niche. And I think the one thing that, that, that he's – uh, he's understanding there's opportunities where where they're at. I think he's made the jump from 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 the level at, that he was at to the Big Ten level and high major level, and he's found out what he can do and can't do. And and uh, uh, Justin is a really really good offensive player, and uh, you know he's he's uh, gained my confidence, and and we've started to see that and. I knew he was a tough guy and a guy that would, would, would guard and rebound and do those things, but uh, he's been excellent on the uh, on the offensive end as well. Free throws were a concern earlier in the year. Is there something that you've said to correct that? Just practice seemingly been fixed, Brett. Get Marcus to the foul line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, you know, I we shoot a lot. Um, you know, as a as a as a former player, you know how mental sometimes um, free throw shooting can be it's it's not a it's not a physical thing sometimes it's a it's really a mental thing um, you know um, you know Quincy was in here yesterday shooting a bunch of free throws because he was upset he missed the front end of a one on one and you know Coleman in a practice yesterday same thing he was mad because he missed you know and, and so guys are taking pride in that We're, we we do practice them a lot but it's really a mental thing and and uh, uh, you know, you get guys with confidence that, that can get to that foul line. Um, helps that percentage a lot. Pat passing out of the post has been really good. Um, is that enhanced when you play a team with a dominant big man uh, like Purdue? Oh. Well, their tendency has been to double. Um, so, you know, I hope so. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, I thought we did a great job against Northwest, or not good, great job of handling because they came from many different angles. Uh, they came from the low, they came from high, they came with a big. Um, and when we did get trapped, there wasn't just panic. Uh, we split them, we stepped through, uh, you know, we found open guys, we found the cutters. Um, you know, I think that, um, you know, when the floor is open and spaced, uh, that gives you those opportunities. But, uh, you know, we got Luke on a cut, we got Quincy on a couple cuts, we got Justin on a cut, um, you know, and, and all those things become really hard to guard when, you, when you've when got two guys around the ball in a post trap. So um, it's been a good thing. Yeah, it's been a good thing. You mentioned you have a point that Zach is more dominant this year than a year ago. In what ways has maybe he improved? You know, I think he's really, really comfortable um, with his teammates. I think that there was a reliance, you know, and just as just an, an, an observing coach, I think there was such a reliance on him last year to, to, to be the guy all the time. He still is that guy, but you see him almost playing better just because their, their, their other guys are doing more. And, um, you know, that's a, he's got a, he's got a great ability to, uh, Offensive rebound. He's, you know, they, they shoot a lot of short shots. Short shots equal short rebounds. Um, he draws a ton of attention. Um, you know, I think he's become a, a, a better passer. Um, I just don't think he's got a ton of weaknesses. And, and at seven four, um, you know, that's that's something that, that you're concerned about because he elevates everybody else on the glass. He elevates those those. Um, uh, those other four men, uh, the shooters, and you know, it's just more comfort for him. I think as a, as a, I see his comfort uh, as a player. Those other guys.